last night, as predicted, Donald Trump's attorney, Will Scharf, went on CNN and started to argue in light of the Supreme Court decision about Donald Trump having broad immunity from prosecution for anything approximating an official act as determined by a lower court. Will Scharf said, we believe the alternate slates of electors were something Trump Trump did as an official act of the presidency. I'm going to play the clip for you. Understand what he is saying here. Will Scharf is saying when the president acts to stay in power with fraudulent electors. That is an official act and thus the president is completely immune. If you don't believe that starts to approximate a king, then what would take a listen to this? You have conceded here the last time that we and I, that you and I spoke in April and John Sauer, who was arguing this before the Supreme Court, that some of what's alleged would be considered a private act. So that would mean that at least part of this case from Jack Smith would go to court based on what you have said before, right? We, we've admitted consistently that there are acts alleged in the indictment that would constitute private conduct. But we believe that if the official conduct, the immune acts in the indictment are stripped away, that Jack Smith doesn't have a case, that this case should be dismissed on, on that basis. I don't think there's sufficient private, private conduct here. Uh, to support the indictment, to support the ongoing prosecution. And even that's what we're going to be litigating in front of the district court now. Even just the false uh, slates of electors, you don't think that would constitute uh, enough for a trial? Well, we would say alternate slates of electors. And as we argued before the Supreme Court, uh, alternate slates of electors have been a method used by previous presidents, most notably Ulysses S. Grant, uh, to ensure the integrity of prior elections. So we believe the the assembly will come back to that Ulysses S. Grant thing. So so let's put let's remember that those alternate slates of electors was an official act uh, of the presidency. That's what we argued before the Supreme Court. Uh, the Supreme Court has reserved that issue for determination by the district court. Uh, and we'll see uh, how arguments fall in front of the district court. Yeah, we've walked through those historical references here before. None of them compare to, to what we saw in 2020 with the fake slates of electors. But Will Scharf, uh, uh, great to have your reaction to this. Thank you for joining us tonight. Now, Caitlin Collins is absolutely correct that what Ulysses S. Grant, or as Donald Trump refers to him, Ulysses S. Grant did, is very different than the proactive deliberate attempt to crowbar in different electors to say we declare that Trump actually won the electoral votes here. Very, very different than having a standby alternate slate of electors, whether that was right or wrong when Ulysses uh, uh, when Ulysses or Ulysses S. Grant did it uh, is, is a different question, but it is very different than what happened in 2020. Now, here's the important takeaway. All along, we knew what the point of the immunity hearing before the Supreme Court was it was we don't really expect the Supreme Court to say that Trump is immune for everything, period, no matter what, forever, no matter what it is he thought of doing or tried to do. It's that there will be immunity confirmed, not just for core official acts. The classic one is when presidents send troops to war. OK, I don't like where most of our troops are sent. This is not a pro war argument I'm about to make, but reasonable people, including progressives, can understand that even though we want presidents to be restrained with regard to use of the military and we believe that many of the uses of the military are not called for and they're a bad idea. If you can go after and charge a president with murder or manslaughter, if they send troops somewhere and troops die, if you could do that, it would functionally disable a president from being able to be president of the United States. That's very clearly a core function. It's abundantly clear. It's the prototypical example. I would lobby for presidents not to put troops in harm's way in situations where they shouldn't be. But if you can go after a president for murder, for deploying troops, you disable the ability of a president to be president. I get that. But the idea that inciting a riot or whatever went on with the documents, which we still don't really haven't gotten to the bottom of or the fake slates of electors. If you can argue that those are official acts that opens up the door to absolute and total chaos, and it is correctly leading people to say, so can Biden as an official act to preserve the integrity of the nation have Trump assassinated? And it is in a sense cartoonish, but at the same time, it's not based on the Supreme Court saying lower courts can decide what's an official act. And it's up to the lawyers representing the president to make that argument. 
So there is going to be much more discussion of this, uh, but this is the argument that they are going to make. For a long time, when I had a computer problem, I'd go on YouTube and Reddit and try to figure it out. And it seemed like the advice that is given 95% of the time is download malware bytes and that'll clean everything up for you. So I have been using malware bytes in real life for years, long before they became a sponsor, simply because malware bytes is way more than just an antivirus. It catches things other antivirus programs miss. With malware bytes, you have comprehensive real time protection against malware, spyware, other malicious attacks that could jeopardize your privacy and personal data. It can detect and remove existing malware already on your devices with its best in class free scan, which is something traditional antiviruses lack. And now you can get identity theft protection as part of a bundle to keep your family's personal information safe with live monitoring, alerts, recovery assistance, and up to a million dollars in identity theft protection. Malware Bytes has a special deal they're doing just for the David Pakman show. You can get any Malware Bytes subscription for 50% off. That's half off at malwarebytes.com slash Pakman. The link is down below.